So let's look at a specific research study and how it's sort of organized as a research study. Um, this is one called Effects of Fast Food Branding on Young Children's Taste Preferences by Thomas Robinson, um, Dina uh, Borzakowski, uh, Donna Matheson, and Helen Kramer. And the objective actually was to examine the effects of cumulative real-world marketing and brand exposures on young children uh, by testing the influence of branding from a heavily marketed source on taste preferences. That's their objective in the study. Um, and the design is an experimental study, so they're going to conduct an experiment. So they say children tasted five pairs of identical foods and beverages in packaging from McDonald's and matched but unbranded packaging and were asked to indicate if they tasted the same or tasted better. So the um, independent variable, which is the variable that the experimenters are manipulating, um, is uh, the branding, you know, whether it's McDonald's packaging or sort of generic, unbranded. Um, and then the dependent variable that they're going to be measuring uh, is taste preferences of three to five-year-olds. It's kind of remarkable that we're talking about only, you know, children that are only three to five years of age, right? And so um, they used six, they, they employed or they, they involved 63 children. Um, and they, you know, the main exposure was the branding of the fast foods and their outcome measures um, a summary total taste preference score. And they found actually that um, branding of foods and beverages influences young children's taste prefer uh, uh, preferences. Um, significantly uh, greater like um, reports of better taste, you know, significantly increased preference if the food, remember this is identical food, was packaged in McDonald's packaging. And so the findings, they say, are consistent with recommendations to regulate marketing to young children and also suggest that branding may also be a useful strategy for influencing, you know, young children's eating behaviors. So, um, you know, the way a, a paper is often, you know, you know, published, it has an abstract, which is, you know, part of what I was reading off of here, which has all the main you know, sort of um, findings, uh, you know, basically why they did the study briefly, um, you know, who participated in the study, what were the results were, you know, what the conclusion is, basically. Um, and then in the actual paper, they have an introduction, typically, where they go into more of the details of why they are doing this particular study, what's been done before, and how they kind of are setting this up. They have a methods section where they describe the methods that they're going to be using to, um, you know, uh, carry out the study. Uh, then they report their results, like what they actually found. And then they have typically a discussion section at the end. Uh, and that goes into some, you know, depth in terms of what they found, what the significance of what they found is. This is where they can be a little freer in terms of, you know, uh, sort of opining or, you know, thinking about, you know, the various implications of what they found of the, this particular research. So this is basically just to give you a little uh, introduction to an actual experimental study. Uh, you know, that where there's a, a, an independent variable, in this case, again, the branding that was manipulated by the experimenters, and then a measurement, right, of the dependent variable, which in this case was, you know, the taste preferences of the children. And I'm going to uh, embed the actual uh, study here so you can examine it uh, and sort of look at it yourself.